Hi, so today I'd like to talk about a bit of a common misconception when it comes to corrosion connectors, what matters and what doesn't matter. So very often when we're going over really complicated devices, particularly devices that we're not familiar with, we try to figure out what type of damage matters and what type of damage doesn't matter. If you're looking at something with thousands and thousands of components, thousands and thousands of pathways, it's not necessarily something where you're going to understand, where where you can just have the expectation that you're going to figure out how all this works, you're going to understand this entire device so that you can get it back in the hands of your customer within an hour or a day or two days. Admittedly, the way we figure a lot of this stuff out is by guessing. Surprise! <laughs> and again, you know, there, there is some elements to guesswork that are wrong. And one of the p- elements to guesswork that I find people often get wrong is that there are these connectors on the board that nothing plugs into, and people think that they don't matter. So there will be connectors on this motherboard that no device plugs into. That n- It's not for a keyboard. It's not for a trackpad. It's not for a screen. It's not for a charger. It's not for data. It's just a port. And they will see these ports. Let me just bring them up on the microscope here. I'll show you one on them. One of these uh, donor boards I have. So people will see these ports. If I can actually find one of these fucking things. Ah, go figure. It's ripped off of all the boards that I have available here because I want to show you in a video. My damn luck. Great job, jackass. Here we go. All right, so let's just get the microscope camera on here. Wow, my head turned red. Whoa, that's something. Okay, we're going to go on the microscope. So this is a port on a retina board that nothing plugs into, and it's a donor board, so it's a little screwed up. But this port sometimes will have corrosion on it. The reason it'll have corrosion on it is because this is at the end of the machine. So this is at the ends of the board, right where the board is meeting the outside world. So what will often happen is you will have the fan... So let's say this is the fan. Water gets sucked in the fan, gets shot out the fan, and shoots its way right into that little connector. Very common thing to have happen. And when people see that the entire board is perfectly clean, but that there's a little stuff on there, people will often think that, oh, well, that doesn't matter. Nothing goes to that connector. Nothing plugs into that connector. That's not something important. And I want to go over why that's a really bad way to think and how you could screw yourself out of some really, really simple repairs, like the one that I just got, because of that method of thinking. Let's see what this port over here does. That's J6100. Now, when I move over to J6100, J6100 has... This goes to the SMC. This goes to the SMC reset circuitry. This talks to the BIOS. This has 5 volts going to it, 3.4 volts going to it. This is a very important hub. So at this connector, so many important voltages and so many important things mix. Do you want 5 volts going to SMC reset? Do you want 5 volts going to your BIOS uh, configurations? Do you want the SMC lines to get mixed with the BIOS lines and vice versa? You probably don't want any of that to happen. So if you have corrosion on this, it's not like you can just say, well, oh, that, that corrosion is not localized to something that, is, that, 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 that components plug into, therefore I can ignore it. This is actually one of the most important places on the board to avoid corrosion. And very often, you can actually fix a board by literally removing the connector, as, <laughs> as I just did before I put it on camera. This was a perfectly clean board besides one tiny little bit of corrosion on the connector. I put flux on it. I put some hot air on it. I removed it. And then I just tinned the pads with solder just to make sure there was no... O- okay, so let me just show you what it looks like under the microscope here. So I'm going to switch over to the microscope capture. I'm going to get to the microscope capture, and that is the connector, looking a lot better than it did before. So I removed the connector, and after removing the connector, I tinned each pad just to make sure there wasn't overlapping solder between the pads. I cleaned it all up, and then after that, I just cleaned up the board so it didn't look like I did any soldering there. And when... I turn the board on, turn the computer on, I should say, not the board. You'll see. Nice, happy chime and an Apple logo. So this is something that, that, that's pretty important because a lot of people will think that that diagnostic port has nothing to do with fixing your problem. Uh, a, it has a lot to do with fixing your problem if there is any type of short between the pins there because if there's any type of short in those pins, you, you could be sending a power rail to a data line, you could be sending one data line to another data line, and B, 
it's a great place to look to do actual diagnostics. Just because you don't have Apple's equipment or gear or factory setup or their JTAG setup to be able to just plug it in and measure everything, that doesn't mean that you can't benefit from looking at that port. So let's say that the PP3V42 pin on that is totally burned, but everything else looks nice. I would then be able to deduce that the PP3V42 rail had ripple on it and then look at everything along that line and start troubleshooting that way. If I saw that there was an issue with you know, some, some data line on there that's not easily apparent when I look at the board, then I could say, hmm, what does that talk to? Then I could look at the chip it talks to, I could remove that chip, and then I would see, oh, there was a completely burned solder ball under there. I have no idea that happened. I would have never seen that with my microscope. I would have never seen that just upon physical inspection. I would have never uh, looked there upon troubleshooting, but because the diagnostic port had one burned pin, and that burned pin was for the signal that went to that chip, and I would have never realized that chip was bad. I would have never solved the problem. So, so many things get solved when you have access to these little clues. And the diagnostic port is a big clue because you have so many signals coming together in one centralized region. So you take one look at that port, you see one pin is corroded, one pin is burned looking, and you can use that to figure out what's actually going on with the system. And it's a really nice way to streamline your troubleshooting. So don't ignore the port just because nothing quote-unquote important plugs into it. Take every clue that you can get and run with it as a way to further understand how a system works so that you can economically repair it.